The eighth Rocket League World Championship tournament came at an interesting time for the game. Psyonix, the developers of Rocket League, had just implemented a controversial update that removed loot crates and replaced them with blueprints, and an all-new item store. In its four years and six months of existence, the community had never been more upset. The recent update had been preceded by another unpopular announcement, that Epic Games had purchased Psyonix, and many suspected the larger company was behind the initial exorbitant item prices. But despite the backlash, something strange was happening. The game was being played just as much, if not more, than before, and along with a steady uptick in players, came an increase in viewers for this eighth season of RLCS, peaking at a record 280,000 combined live viewers for the Grand Final. But it gets even stranger. The two most popular teams in competitive Rocket League, the Season 6 World Champions Cloud9 and the Season 7 Semifinalists G2, weren't even there. So what was so special about this tournament in Madrid? These players, this moment that had captured the eyes of so many spectators. If we had to boil down this entire World Championship tournament into a single storyline, it would come down to one player. Garrett G. He's the main character in this story. But don't worry, this weekend wasn't just about him, not by a long shot. And he'd be the first to tell you that. In fact, this video could probably be called the true story behind Turbo Pulsa, or Justin, or Vitality, or Dignitas, or, well, you get it. There was quite a bit going on here. And today, we're gonna break it all down. From the beginning of our hero's journey to the final seconds of the game seven overtime that decided it all. This is the true story behind Garrett G and the Rocket League Championship. Before we dive in, I should say a little something about what I was doing at this tournament in Madrid. So you may have seen on Twitter already, but my friend and fellow Rocket League YouTuber Mertzi and I just signed with Space Station Gaming as content creators. Space Station actually has an RLCS team comprised of AXB, Sipical, and Arsenal, who rolled through league play and qualified for Worlds. So we were there repping and supporting the org, and of course having a great time meeting some of you guys and watching what would turn out to be one of the greatest RLCS finals of all time. To celebrate our signing with Space Station, Mertzi and I released a collaboration jacket from Champion that's available now until the end of the year. Also, one lucky person that buys one will win an SSG care package, decal, and will join me and Mercy for some 3v3 on our Twitch stream as a thank you for your support. But remember, if you can't buy one, the biggest thing you can do for me is free, and that's to subscribe to the channel. Sometimes it's the little things like that that actually mean the most. So thank you guys for everything you've done for me in 2019 and the last few years uh, on YouTube. Okay, enough about me. Let's go back to before I even knew Rocket League existed. Let's go back nearly four years now to 2016. The beginning of Garrett G's career is synonymous with the beginning of competitive Rocket League, especially World Championship tournaments. Over a hundred players have made this land stage, but only one has been here for all eight. This is the very first broadcast of RLCS, an online qualifier for the few coveted spots in a season one land tournament. Here's the very first RLCS goal from Garrett G. On the attack. Garrett for the early he qualified with a team called Vex Gaming, but by the time Worlds rolled around, the team was now playing under Exodus. In their very first RLCS series, they swept EU Mocket, a team featuring an OG legend in Pashi, and also this other guy that probably wouldn't end up being very important. Right? Unfortunately, after that, Exodus took a quick uh, Exodus themselves, getting swept in the next two series to end their tournament run. And just like that, Garrett had his first land under his belt, but he had come away empty. Expect them to be back and even stronger next time. For season two, Garrett found himself on the same team of Turtle and Moses, but under a new name, Orbit Esports. In this second RLCS land, things went even worse for them than the first. Orbit lost a close battle with Mocket in their first series, and then in the lower bracket got beat by Take 3, and a certain G2 player you might recognize. With those two losses, Orbit had finished Season 2 dead last, and Garrett was ready for a change. That change was NRG, who added Garrett to the roster of Jacob and Fireburner. Energy had a great season in league play and came into the third world championship tournament as the number one team from North America. For the first time, Garrett was a front runner at LAN and a championship was within reach as they surged through the tournament into the semifinals. However, they were defeated by Mocket and then sent home by the eventual champion, Northern Gaming. That guy from season one got his revenge this time and more. 
Their third place finish in Season 3 was enough to keep NRG together and reach a fourth consecutive land. But just like in Season 2, they were defeated early, this time by Method and then the OCE Chiefs. Yet another last place finish for Garrett could have meant the end of the road for his professional career. He had tried four times now and failed. After he witnessed Turbo win yet another championship to become the first player to do it twice, he put out this statement on Twitter. Regardless of what happens, I'm not gonna stop till I lift that trophy. A bold statement for a very young professional scene that saw players drop out every season. And for Garrett, the challenges were only just beginning. The last place finish last season meant it was time for another change for NRG. Jacob was replaced by the young and unproven superstar Justin, who together with Garrett G became the first team to finish undefeated in league play, charging into the fifth world championship with determination. Unfortunately, determination, and even the greatest zero second goal of all time, still wasn't enough to defeat the powerhouse of KDOP, Violent Panda, and the now three time championship winner Turbo Pulsa. Garrett had now been to five lands and still hadn't won, while he had witnessed Turbo win three. He had come one goal away from the ultimate achievement in Rocket League, only to be denied again. A lot of players probably would have quit right about now, especially if they knew how much worse it was about to get. Season six was another land disaster for Garrett. Energy had once again finished league play as the number one team from North America and had once again lost to the Chiefs from OCE. But Garrett, the Chiefs upset NRG! The kryptonite of NRG, the Chiefs do it again! In the lower bracket, they had the misfortune of matching up against the eventual champions, Cloud9. The corner chooses to go for the pass play instead. Three players crawling in the box. Give it, puts it in! The demolition made the way! Another season, same story for Energy. Another dominating league play meant NRG was the number one North America seed again for season seven. The format changed this year. With the addition of the South America region, games were played in groups of the first two days, followed by a single elimination tournament on the final day. NRG did great in their group, and then got promptly 3 one by, you guessed it, the eventual champions. This meant that in three of the last four seasons, NRG had been knocked out by the eventual world champions. After this result, Garrett's longtime teammate Fireburner announced his retirement. And I'm sure the thought crossed Garrett's mind as well. But he meant what he said all the way back in 2017. He wasn't gonna stop now, even after seven consecutive defeats. It was time for another chance and a new teammate. There was only one player who could replace Fireburner. Only one character that had consistently proven himself to be a winner, and repeat winner. The player that Garrett had beaten in his very first LAN series, and had watched win three championships while he went home empty-handed. In the first ever EU to NA roster move, Turbo was home with Garrett on NRG. Literally home, as Garrett offered Turbo a place to live in North America, together as roommates. As the eighth season of RLCS approached, Garrett was now the only player in the world to reach every single LAN and what a land this 8th RLCS would be. Arsenal thinks about the pass. He's got too many options. I'm proud to say Space Station and Arsenal were popping off, literally musty flicking their way into the semifinals. But it was there that they ran into our friend Garrett, which meant NRG was now in the grand finals, one series away from finally winning a championship. One more series. The last three teams in the tournament now contained the entirety of the old Dignitas roster of KDOP, now on Vitality, Turbo Pulsa, now on NRG, and Violet Panda, still on Dignitas. In the Vitality versus Dignitas semifinal matchup, we saw one of the greatest RLCS series of all time. Dignitas had fought tooth and nail just to be here in Madrid, qualifying for Worlds through the regional lower bracket. After being down 3-0 in their first series, one game away from elimination, their coach Verge gave an inspiring speech. We sound like we've already lost. We've given up. I don't care if we're down 5-1, 10-1, we have no goals, doesn't matter. We need to be trying our best. We're not giving everything we have right now. I'm not okay with finishing our, our season giving up. I need more energy from everybody. They reverse swept, won their next series, and now they were here, facing the defending world champs of Vitality. It came down to Game 7, after a gripping five-minute overtime in Game 6. The competition was so compelling, the crowd at one point burst into applause just from the back-and-forth defense and quality of play, something I've never seen a crowd do before at LAN. Six is not going to happen. That's it. Oh. Blocked. Battle Panda up. He finds a shot, actually. And 
the toss. They're looking to survive for game seven. Oh, that high bounce is trouble. Three minutes and 30 seconds of overtime so far. Just neck and neck from these teams. They finally puncture the back line. Vala Panda's the last line of defense. He gets one play. Here's Kada, but he puts it high. In the end, KDOP and Vitality were too strong for Dignitas, and the defending world champs moved on to face Garrett and NRG in the Grand Finals. If the previous match of Dig vs Vitality was the greatest RLCS series of all time, then this one quickly moved up in contention as well. Both teams grappled for their spot at the top, back and forth, unrelenting, showing the world why they're the best of the best. And no one stepped up more than Turbo. Turbo was a force in every way, guiding NRG through the series. With a win in Game 5, NRG went up 3-2. to two. Garrett was once again one game away from his dream becoming a reality. The nerves will be tested now. But Vitality would not be beaten that easily. Up by one goal with time expiring, they held off NRG's last second attack. With Garrett's shot careening off the crossbar, this series would be decided in Game 7. All Game 7s at RLCS take place at Champions Field. So this was a huge flashback to Season 5 for Justin, Garrett, KDOP, and of course, Turbo. With the clock winding down and both teams unable to secure the first goal, it was flashbacks again for NRG. Justin saw an opportunity for a solo play and took it. Rather than following the ball for a touch the defender was expecting, Justin turns his attention to the defender himself. Energy and Garrett were now minutes from a championship. All they had to do was hold on. But as Garrett knows all too well, it never is that easy, is it? With just 28 seconds remaining, Vitality pounced, tying up the game. Of course, this would be decided in overtime. As I've said before in season five, you could not have written a better script. As overtime played out, the tension in the arena was palpable. I wish I could describe the atmosphere in the building. As Fairy Peak attacked the NRG defense here, I thought this was the moment that Garrett's World Championship hopes would slip away in Game 7 overtime yet again. But like in the past when Garrett had vowed to lift the trophy after finishing last place in Season 4, he didn't give up. He kept going and did everything he could to be the best he could be. It took help from an unlikely foe. And of course, a young superstar who knew how to deliver in the final moments at Champions Field. So as Garrett lofted the perfect pass downfield to set up Justin, I'm sure he had no doubt that his teammates would be there for him. And in the end, make his dream of a world championship come true. I'm Sunless Khan. Thanks for watching. kept you going for all these seasons and all these years. This moment right here.